Hey YouTube, it has been a really long time since I've done a tutorial video, but Propellerhead's product manager, Kale, is blaming me for Thor, so I figure I owe him something, right? And uh, fortunately, I figured out a really cool trick, and I'm going to show you how to actually make the polysonic synthesizer polysonic by doing three different synthesized parts in one instance. So we'll do a drum, a bass synth, and a lead synth all in one sequencer and synth patch mess. It's going to be fun. So to start this one off, I'm using the step sequence template, uh, which just gives you one oscillator. And I'm going to immediately replace that with the phase modulation oscillator type because I found a fairly amusing way of uh, playing uh, kick drums with this by putting in a square. And bring that into another square. And I'm not going to use the keyboard for this because if you listen to it right now, won't hear anything because I haven't got it going anywhere. So it's it's listening to the sequencer. And it's just doing a whole bunch of C's. But we're not going to use the sequencer at all here. And the reason you're still hearing that constant C is it's just doing that as a default now. And I can shape it using the octave switcher or whatever. So now it is listening to the gate on this. So if I turn off the gate, it stops playing in those sections. But I want it to do just a kick on the first note for each of these four parts. So instead of going through and deactivating all the gates, because that'll screw up all the other parts here, I'm going to clear this out <clears throat> and put in a new sequencer modulation that will listen on curve one. And I'm going to point that at the mixer for the oscillator one and two balance and I'm gonna crank that up and when I go over to curve one now if I push it all the way over to the left it's causing the balance uh, right here to go back and forth so now on the first note it's sending the trigger thing to move the balance here all the way to the left, which is just giving us oscillator one. And let me move that out of the first filter because we're going to need that later. And I will route that now into the second filter and tell it to output that. Let me go through now and tell it to give me all of the second oscillator on the two, three, and four of each part here. And let's give it a second oscillator now. I'm just going to use a regular analog here. And that's also using the keyboard. I'm going to tell it to stop doing that. And now let's give this some new notes to play other than that repeating C. And I'm going to use step sequencer curve two to do that. And we don't care what this is on because we're never going to hear that because we're never hearing oscillator two on the first. But now I can kind of tweak around on that. Sloppy, but let's keep the show moving here. All right, I also don't want that to be tracking keyboard at all either. And you notice I'm not using the uh, envelope, although that sounds cool. I'm going to be using that filter envelope later. So we need to give it something else 
to use as an envelope for the filter. And for that, I'll use the uh, global filter, or global envelope, rather. And we'll send that at filter two, frequency. And now when I go into the global envelope, I'm gonna cause it to be triggered by gates. So I've shaped my envelope to basically be triggering this uh, gently so it's not super aggressive while I'm doing this. <clears throat> I'm going to change the mode to 6 because that sounds really cool. Basically that's just giving me a slight dip and not a uh, harsh 24 decibel slope. And you can play around with that if you want to make it more aggressive. I in the drive, but let's keep this calm so that the whole tutorial doesn't sound like shit. And uh, now we've got the kick. And you notice I put this over here on this side because for some reason I'm not really hearing the the kick when it's over on the far right. So here you're hearing both the kick. I can demonstrate that for you. So you're still hearing the kick. You might not be hearing this on uh, um, like laptop speakers. It's kind of low, but you're hearing both kick and what I'm calling the bass. It could probably come down an octave. All right, and we haven't used the the whole like actual sequencing bits designed specifically for sequencing notes. Um, and before I do that, I want to show you a little trick here. Uh, we have so many different envelopes and LFOs and all kinds of other crazy. Um, let's add some more life to this before we even get into actually using the sequencer as it was intended. Uh, I want to use the mod envelope to now play around with the pitch of oscillator 2. And remember, we're using the uh, curve to do that, but now we're going to play with it even more. I'm going to push it up uh, about 24, because it looks like it's not really in MIDI scale, so it's not like 127s over here, but I don't know, around 20-ish sounds pretty good, so I'm going to throw that on there, and now let me give the mod envelope some decay. Let me kill that so you can hear that. So this is it without, or that's it without, I throw that back in. That's a little too aggressive. All right, let's just give it a little bit of a bounce. That's good for the bass. And once again, we're not using like the filter envelope or we haven't even really screwed around with the amp envelope or anything like that. We're not using any of the LFOs. We're just making things do what we want them to do rather than what they were designed to do. Because this is a totally modular environment. We can do that. Like we can, like let's use the mod envelope now uh, to add some motion in our kick. Uh, I want to send this to the mod. Uh, let's try going this way with it. See, like, just something that right off the top of my head while I'm doing this, I thought, hey, this, this might be cool. And, and sure enough, that sounds really cool. So now let's actually put in our lead synthesizer and start using some of these things the way that they're intended. 
I'm gonna put in another analog for this. I'm gonna try to do like a uh, 303 style thing here. And this will in fact be using the, the keyboard assignment, which is what uh, this bit up here is uh, going to be assigning. And we want to put that through the top filter. Oops. And right now that's just doing the C's, like lots and lots of C's. But it still sounds really cool, right? Let me turn off this so you can hear that on its own. And by using the first uh, filter, I can now route this into the shaper, which gives me an additional drive besides the uh, filters drive, like the soft clip here. So I got a kind of aggressive lead going on. There's going to be a huge cut there while I put together a bunch of different little patterns here and came up with something that is kind of amusing here. All of that done with one instance of Thor. It truly is polysonic.